thank you, Marilyn. Uh, that was really terrific. Uh, now I know why when Nancy, Doug, and I went to Larry and talked about creating some kind of engagement in honor of Howard Milstein, Larry and the team recommended the Adam Smith Society. And Marilyn, you've done a wonderful job, and congratulations for everything. Uh, what many of you may not know is that this is a fellowship that Nancy, myself, and Douglas have given to Howard as a birthday present. So there you go. We, and we were uh, college roommates, Douglas, myself, and Howard. And we've been best friends for decades. I won't tell you how many, but it goes back to that early, those early years, Marilyn. Uh, but this is just in line with how you're thinking at the Manhattan Institute, Anna Smith Institute, that when you're looking for a birthday present for a friend, you would create a fellowship in honor. This Milstein Fellowship was born of the deepest friendship Nancy, Doug, and I have for Howard. We know his greatest trait is his generosity, especially for things that matter. As a businessman, a citizen, a philanthropist, friendship, and for family. And so what better way to honor our dearest friend's commitment to community than to establish a fellowship in service to those values? The Adam Smith Society embodies exactly what we know Howard cherishes, Marilyn, that you founded and articulated so well, which was reflected in how much interest he took in choosing the theme of the fellowship that captured Howard's ideas. This formal announcement of the ideas articulated when he was your age, maybe even younger, a Cornell economics student where he received the first summa cum laude for his thesis on, quote, why the stationary state was to be discarded. That was, in those days, all the rage about 45 years ago when we were students, when Howard was a student. And he knew then that it was a bad idea. Some today are still suffering with that. The quote that you may have seen listed in the announcement of the fellowship directly from his thesis then over 40 years ago, quote, the consequences of economic growth are, in the broader sense, immeasurable. The impact of this growth on societal structures, organizations, and values in modern industrial society cannot be overstated. In other words, we need to continue to innovate and grow, which will bring value to humanity, and it is the best of our American democratic capitalism where this is produced. Nancy, Doug, and I are indebted to Larry, the board, and the staff of the Manhattan Institute, to Marilyn, and thank you, Michael Fudak, as well, of the Adam Smith Society, for working with us to bring Howard Milstein's values as a businessman, community philanthropist, and yes, a lover of ideas, of good ideas, to this next generation, to you, the next generation of business leaders, Inspiring others, especially those who come after us, is the greatest expression of generosity. And we hope that this fellowship will do that in the image of Howard Milstein's achievements for the betterment of society. And now, Howard, a great man of ideas and my best friend. Wow, thanks, Mike. <laughs> so, also thanks to Nancy and Doug. Somewhere in here, I have my remarks. So, this is the actual resistance. You know, you hear about the resistance out there. Well, this is the real resistance in here. I want to also thank uh, Larry. Larry Moan and I have been... Uh, involved in this for a long time. I was just thinking as I was sitting there that uh, we partnered with the Manhattan Institute about 25 years ago to distribute 10,000 copies <laughs> of the publication to uh, all the residents of some buildings that we were involved with. So we 
we've been trying to do this for a long time. I want to thank also the board of the Manhattan Institute uh, for all the intellectual and public policy contributions you've been making for several decades. The piece last week in the Wall Street Journal was a good reminder of the profound impact the Manhattan Institute has had on our quality of life here in New York City. And through that prism, literally, to help chart paths for economic growth, create community and social value, and most importantly, foundations for America's continued leadership across the globe. I am pleased to be with you this evening for the inaugural Milstein Fellowship Award Ceremony. It kicks off the Adam Smith, so this Adam Smith Society and the Manhattan Institute's national meeting. The Manhattan Institute's new Adam Smith Society, well, six years old, we still call it, <laughs> is in fact in the tradition of Manhattan Institute's contributions to strengthening the best of American institutions. In this case, a forum for tomorrow's business leaders to ensure they have a grounding in good ideas, public policy engagement, and community and social contribution, essential components of 21st century business leadership. There's a wonderful turnout this evening, and surely in the tradition of everything the Manhattan Institute does, it will be at the highest standard of excellence in its performance. My congratulations to Ken Griffin. Uh, he will receive the Principal Leadership Award later this evening. And I especially want to thank my dear friends and colleagues, Mike Oden and his wife Nancy and Doug Diamond, for the gift of this fellowship award and the inspiration to engage next generation business leaders through the essay contest. The fellowship is awarded each year to a scholar whose essay best incorporates the principles and philosophies of the Manhattan Institute and the Adam Smith Society, which focus on the moral, social, and economic benefits of capitalism and the virtues of free markets. And as Mike and Doug know from our days at Cornell, my own essay, my senior honors thesis, was itself written during that earlier time when conventional wisdom challenged the very notion of economic growth. Some of you may remember those days in the early 70s when the Club of Rome put forth the notion that we could no longer grow because we as a global society were overpopulating there and thereby depleting natural resources too rapidly. The prescription at that time was in effect to create a stationary state, i.e. no growth. My thesis reviewed the history of that phrase through each succeeding school of economic thought, starting with Adam Smith, who believed it was an actual state of economies. Uh, of course, went through the classical Economists also that used the idea of ceteris paribus, which was a stationary state. But we ended up in, the, in modern times and concluded what in those days, especially on campus, was a peculiar thought that through free markets, entrepreneurship, and innovation, we could continue to grow, prosper, and improve quality of life on the planet without running out of anything. Moreover, that the only limits to growth would and should be the limits of the human mind. I can say now history has proven this correct, and it's ironic that in today's notion of income inequality, we find a similar intellectual straw man. Which is why when I read, when I read the final essays, I was delighted to work with Manhattan Institute staff to conclude that this year's Milstein Fellowship be awarded to La La Land? No, no. <laughs> be awarded to Gabriel Ng. for his essay entitled, How Values Drive Value, Reconciling Corporate Social Responsibility with Friedman's World. Through essays like this, we will continue to fight the intellectual arguments based more on ideology than evidence, more on failed notions of socialism than on the true aspirations of what functioning markets can achieve. Surely we are reminded of another friend of Manhattan Institute's work, Michael Novak, who recently passed. Uh, that it is out of the magic of democratic capitalism's multitude of self-interest we come to the greatest public good. Add to that a businessman's philanthropic contributions, and we have the best of American values. So congratulations to Gabriel, who is a first-year dual MBA-MPA student at NYU. 
He grew up in Hong Kong and was educated and worked in London before coming to New York. A former lawyer, he's interested in the intersection of law, policy, and business. We not only share these interests in common, but Gabriel ably quoted Shakespeare in his essay asking, so is the corporate world's Brutus to Friedman Caesar betrayed by those he loved? I too am a student of Shakespeare, and in fact for many years served on the board of the Shakespeare Theater in Washington, D.C. I was very much inspired by his incisive and elegant essay. Gabriel writes that the proliferation of corporate social responsibility measures are a vindication of Friedman's view, not a contradiction. Furthermore, that the drive for profit can and increasingly does integrate socially responsible programs as a source of business growth and customer and employee loyalty. What's more, many social responsibility programs help foster a stable environment for doing business and enhance productivity by improving working conditions. I'd like to think my own career has been marked by entrepreneurship, innovation, and a belief in the power of free markets. These principles animate my philanthropic and civic efforts as well. Where I've seen how applying private sector techniques to public and philanthropic work maximizes creativity and impact. Having always lived by the motto, doing well by doing good, Gabriel's dual message of business success and social good resonated with me and I'm sure with all of us here this evening. I'm most delighted to look out at the hundreds of students and business leaders at the beginning of your careers. How wonderful that you are dedicating yourselves to discovery, debate, and learning about important ideas to ensure that our economic system thrives in the future and you contribute to wealth generation, job creation, the alleviation of poverty and innovation. In short, a better world. Congratulations again to Gabriel and thank you to everyone who submitted an essay for the Milstein Fellowship. I hope this will inspire others in the future and wish you all much success as you continue your studies and embark on professional careers. Gabriel, come on up.